Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. If you experimented a lot with the simple counter application that we created in the first videos of this playlist, and if you reached a certain number within the counter then you accidentally rotated your screen, you'll see that the value of the counter is reset to zero. Well, what you encountered was something called a configuration change changing the orientation of the device from portrait to landscape or vice versa is one type of the configuration changes in Android. But I don't understand why the value has been reset to zero. Well, some configuration changes in Android recreate the whole activity. That means that your activity is destroyed and it will be recreated from the beginning and that will lead to calling the onCreate from the start. So everything within the onCreate will be reset to its initial values. Everything within the onCreate will be set to the initial stage. Now, handling configuration changes and preserving activity state is an essential thing for every Android developer. And in this video, we are going to learn how we can do this in multiple ways. So we are back in our Android Studio and here we have our application, the counter application. Once we increment the value, as we've seen before, and then we rotated the device, you can see that the value is reset to zero. So what we want to do is to preserve this state or preserve the activity state. So now let's go back to the main activity class and here as you can see we have a current result which is set to zero, then we are setting this current result to the text of the text view and then just we have two click listeners for the buttons, one to increment and one for the decrement and here is our layout for that application. Now to preserve the activity state, we will override a callback called on save instance state. And this callback is generally called after the on pause and sometimes it's called after the on stop. And you can use it to save small amount of data of your activity. So here I will override the on save instance state. And you can see we have two variations for the on save instance state. We will use the one that passes only one bundle or a bundle and here we will use this bundle to save our data. So to preserve the activity state we have to do two steps. The first step is to save the state then to restore the state. So here we will do the first step and we will use the bundle to do this. Now the bundle is a special class in Android that we can use to save small amount of data. Now within this bundle we have a couple of sections or a couple of fields that we can use to save or to preserve our data. Those fields resemble all the primitive types that we know like integers, float, characters, boolean and so on. Additionally within the bundle you can put strings, parsable types, serializable types and even a whole bundle. Now let's start saving the state of the counter or the current result of our text view. So here we'll call the out state, which is the bundle passed from the function. Then we'll call the put integer. And here, as you can see, we have different types of things that we can put within this bundle. So in this case, we will use the put integer. And here we have to pass a key and a value. So the bundle works similar to a map. The bundle uses the key to search up for that value that you want within that field or within this section. So we are using the integer field within the bundle. And here we have to pass a key that must be unique across all the values that you put within the bundle. So instead of just passing a literal value, we will create a constant variable within the activity. Here after the binding, I will make it private val since it's a constant. And since it's a constant, I will name it with capital letters. So counter key. And here it must be string. So I'm just assigning to anything, maybe my key. Now we will go back to the bundle and here we'll put our key, so counter key, and then we will put the value that we receive from the text view. So binding dot result tv dot text, make it string, then make it an integer since we are saving this or we are preserving this as an integer. Now the first step is done. The second step is to restore the state. Well, to do this, we have two options. You can restore the state within the onCreate or you can use the onRestoreInstanceState callback. And here again it sends a bundle which is the same bundle within the onCreate. Let's first start with the onCreate then we are going to move to restore the state within the onRestoreInstanceState callback. 
So initially the bundle that the onCreate has is null. So whenever the application is created from the very start, the bundle is null as there is no state to restore. So for this, we have to check if the bundle is not null. So save instant state. If it's not null, we want to get the value that we saved within the bundle and then we have to assign it to the current result variable. So here current result is equal to save instant state dot get integer and you can see we can pass a key so we're going to pass the same key the counter key and it can also pass a default value for your integer if the saved instant state didn't find that integer within the bundle then the default value will be assigned to that variable so if this is the case that's it we want to assign the integer that we saved within the instant state to the current result now let's run to test this out. Now let's try to increment the number. For example, let's reach 10. Then we are going to rotate the device. And here you can see the 10 is now preserved. So again, what happens is that the activity is created for the first time. And here the save instant state will be null. So we are not going to execute this code here within the if block the current result will be zero and it will be set to the text view then we are going to increment and decrement and do whatever that we did just a minute ago and then when we rotated the device the on destroy is called but before the on destroy we had the on stop and the on pause and after the on pause the on saved instance state was called and it saved the value from our text view which is the result text view and here the on create again it's called and this time the saved instance state is not null so the current state or the value that we had before rotating the device is set to the current result and eventually our result TV will have the same value before rotating the device now let's try to do this with the on restore instant state instead of the on create which will have the same result eventually so just get this here and we will put that within the on saved instant state now in this case we don't have access to the current result so we will make the current result as a field or as a class variable instead of making it a local variable and here the saved instant state that the on restore instant state passes is not null so we don't have to check for the instant state as the restore instant state is not called on the very first creation of the activity no it's called once the activity is being recreated so that's why the bundle is not null now let's run and here as you can see if we increment then we rotate the device we don't have our value restored to the text view and that's because the on restore instant state is called after the on start and we know that the on start is called after the on create so the line of code here was not called after we restored the value so what we are going to do is that we are going to copy this and put it under the current result once we get the value from the bundle and now let's try again let's increment the value then try to rotate the device as you can see here the value is restored and the value now is set to the text view now the second option would be to use a view model class which is a class in android that is designed to store and manage ui related data in a lifecycle away manner is used to separate the presentation layer which is our user interface in this case from the data layer so the data here we are talking about the counter or the count value of the counter and it is also used to ensure that the data survives the configuration changes such as the rotation or the changing the orientation of the device that we have just encountered or other interruptions and now let's start by implementing our view model for our main activity class instead of using the save instant state in combination with the on restore instant state. So I'm going just to delete both of these callbacks and here I'm going to create the view model as a class within the same file. So here it's going to be a class and I'm going to call it main view model. And here our view model must extend the view model that comes from the architecture component which is just a set of libraries and guidelines and components that are used to build robust maintainable and testable applications you can look up for the architecture components and see the different libraries and the guidelines that they are providing 
now here our main view model will extend the view model and then we will open the body of the main view model class now what we want to have within the view model here is the value for the counter so the value for the counter is initially set to zero we will just delete the key as we don't need it for now so we will put our counter value here and we will just set it to zero and notice that i will not make it private i will leave it as public so i can change it from outside of the main view model now let's go to the main activity and here what we are going to do is we are going to create an instance of our view model so the view model is a special class that you cannot just create val view model equal to main view model directly as this class is made from something called view model provider and the view model provider is a class that is responsible to provide instances for the view model that you created within your application so instead of doing this we will call the view model provider and here we have to call the constructor of the view model provider and you can see we have a couple of variations for the view model provider the first one is the one that we are going to use and here it needs view model store owner so who is the owner of this view model and here we are going to say this activity is the owner of this view model so for this we are going to pass this then we are going to call the get function that will get the instance of our main view model so main view model and here we will pass class.java so what happens in this line is that the view model provider first will try to get an instance of the main view model that is attached to the main activity now if it didn't find any instances which will happen at the first time only then it will create a new instance now whenever the activity is destroyed and recreated during the configuration changes it will again call the view model provider .get. but in this case in memory we have an instance of the main view model that is attached to the activity so the view model provider will not create a new instance instead it will get the old instance that we created before and reuse it here and this is how the main view model or the view models in general preserve the state during the configuration changes now we have an error here because we are sitting we don't have access to the current result anymore so instead of this we will set the result text to the view model dot current result and here we have to convert it to a string and finally we have to modify these lines of code this one is going to increment the value from the view model so view model again dot current result and the same here view model dot current result just change this from a plus to a minus and finally we will set both of these to the current result from the view model so view model dot current result dot do string copy this over and paste it here now let's run and rotate our device to see how the view model preserve the state And here we will increment the value for example let's reach 7 then we will rotate our device and you can see the view model helps us to preserve the state of the activity now if you want to listen to the different configuration changes and you want to apply some code during some configuration changes android provides a callback called on configuration changed and this callback is called never some configuration change that you specify happen so what we want to do is that we want to change the activity layout in the landscape and the portrait mode whenever we rotate our device so here we are going to implement the on configuration change callback on configuration changed callback and you can see here that the on configuration change callback is passing a new config variable of type configuration and we can use this variable to determine what type of configuration it is and to know what is the current state of the configurations of the current application but before that the on configuration changed is typically used when the developer wants to handle the configuration change manually android operating system handles the configuration changes for us but if you want to customize what happens when the configuration change happens then we can override the on configuration change callback 
Now the on configuration change callback will not be called unless you specify what type of configurations that you want to listen to and do your customization on. And you can do this by going to the manifest file here within the activity. You can specify what type of configuration that you want to listen to by config changes attribute. And here what we want to listen to is the orientation so the landscape or the portrait along with the screen size as screen size of our application changes whenever we rotate so we are going back to the configuration change and always make sure to call the super.on configuration change as it is used to set the default behavior for the configuration change so always make sure you leave it there and now what we want to do is we want to check first if the configuration or the orientation of the device is portrait then we want to set this binding dot root now if this is not the case we want to set another binding or another root for another layout that we are going to create just in a minute so now it's time to create our layout so here i'm going to the layout and click new choose new layout file or layout resource file and here I'm going to name it alternative layout or alt layout for short. Then we will drop random views just to see how these views or this layout will be displayed on the landscape mode of the device. So let me just choose a picture from the drawable resource, some text views, some views, another image view maybe with an icon. And here I'm going to use this option which infer the constraints of the views according to their position not very useful but in this situation it's very useful because I don't want to constrain them to the parent and I don't want them to be at the 0 0 position on the top left corner so I will just infer the constraints and here I'm going back to the main activity and what we want to do is we want to check for the orientation so here we will add the F block if the new config now the new config will help us to check for the orientation if the new config dot orientation is equal to configuration dot orientation portrait then we want to set the default layout for our main activity which is binding dot root so here call the set content view binding dot root now if this is not the case then we want to add our alternative layout so set content view r dot layout dot alt layout now let's run to see the result so here you can see here is our default layout if we rotated the screen or the device you can see here is our alternative layout that is applied when the device is in the landscape mode now if you go back to the Android manifest file and if you add the sign to concatenate different config changes then you press ctrl space you'd find all the configuration changes all the possible configuration changes that you can listen to for example the color mode the density of the screen the font scale we also have the keyboard if it's hidden the layout direction the local and so on and so forth and here when you go to the new config you can always check for this by calling new config dot orientation color mode density dbi font scale and all other config changes now we have seen how we can restore the state of the activity when it's recreated due to the configuration changes but keep in mind that what we did here will not preserve the state or the data within the application when the application is completely destroyed and reopened from the launcher for that particular case, we would use something to persist the data within the Android device. Something like shared preferences, which is just a data store or a small database within the Android system that you can use to save small amount of data or a complete database within the Android system. But we will save these topics for the future videos within the same playlist. So that was all for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.